Keegan's like, he was exiting the trail as if he was like gonna go to the bathroom, and then Keegan like just looked over and he's like, oh, and he fell over. Because he, he came in, he's like, I have What's no idea what happened is, to Taylor. Is he like, so. is he okay? He's in the medical tent, he's coherent. He's just kind of a little delirious. That's what we were curious, so we just wanted to, so we can go tell them. Unless something. he just he, went off the trail yeah, and went Keegan to sleep. Yeah, not see him crash. He can he he like, like a slow speed, whatever it yeah. was. Yeah, he like, like he was yeah, stopping he to take a piss, like, and then he just like fell Like, you know, like, fell like, fell like, fell like, fell like you're going to go. Yeah. yeah. What time is it? 727. Go ahead, that control. Uh, we also have our uh, side-by-side. Yeah, What's your status? Like, what's my, looking at me clearly? Can you see me okay? Uh-huh. Can you understand what happened? Yeah. Four hours in El Pueblo for me is definitely the most, I shouldn't say important because it's the most special event for me. But there's one moment in my head that sticks out. I did it one time with Mary and my dad as my pit crew and like many of my races have this story of either crashing out early but I remember this one year I was down there and I, I crashed out in the wind and I came back and I was so upset that I told Mary and my dad like I'm gonna keep coming back to this race until I feel content until I feel like I've been able to check all the boxes that I have kind of personally in my own head and there's still a lot of those boxes I need to check out there and that's why I keep coming back to that race one of the best endurance mountain bikers the sport has ever seen is coming back again, but we all have the same question. Can he link it together? His consistency has been questionable over the past few years. For me, cycling has been kind of my own thing. In some ways, I've kind of wanted to keep it that way. Right, like when I go out on my bike, whether it's training or racing, I can kind of get in my own head and not necessarily not worry about others, but it's my own place. I don't really have a ton of friends or immediate friends in the cycling industry or in the cycling world. So it's nice to have that kind of to myself, it feels like. And I feel like I have the personality. I'm like, I kind of, I can get really obsessed with things. I need to be careful with that because I can go too deep into the woods with with cycling and not separate. When I first got into the sport, I couldn't get enough of it. Like I just loved it. My dad used to ride into work and home from work on certain days of the week and I would get up with him and I'd ride with him part of the way to work over the mountain and then ride back home before school when it was still dark. And I, I just couldn't get enough of it. It was like this way that my dad and I could kind of form this different relationship. I had put this pressure on myself that my dad was expecting certain things of me that I don't think were necessarily true. And I put way too much pressure on myself because going back to what I said, right? He was the one who was taking time away from work he was the one paying for these trips. So I felt like I had to give back in a way. Hi. <laughs> why is it so weird? I don't even know why I can't introduce myself. Hi, I'm Mary Ladine and Taylor is my husband. That's all I got. Bye.
Taylor and I, I think we actually met earlier than we were really remember, but we really got to be friends in high school in our ceramics class. <laughs> we were both on the, the wheel making ceramic pots in high school and actually I wasn't making anything. I was just like trying to contain this like blob of clay. Taylor was like, <laughs> I guess you would consider him the class clown, but not like, not the way like I think most class clowns are perceived. He was just like undercover hilarious and his friends and everyone that hung out were just like drawn to him for that. I knew that I could trust her right away um, because in high school I was going through some pretty dark places and after high school that I kind of kept to myself. No one really knew about him and I slowly let Mary in. The one thing I can say about Taylor is he's very sincere and so I never doubted what he told me when he did tell me things. And I also knew that when he opened up, it meant a lot to him to do that. And for me, it was like the first time I'd actually been able to outwardly speak about some things that were going on in my head, some things that were scaring me. And it just felt comforting to know like, she was there to support me through all that. So far, uh, I think he's doing really good. He's keeping in the zone, but not like overly yeah. like focused or too like intense. So that yeah. feels good. Um, he's able to like make a little joke, like when he was in the pit doing this thing, like telling someone like, you know, just making a crack and a joke here. That's really good to see. It means he's like able to take in the externals a little bit more and not just be like totally narrow focus on the race, so love that. Two, three. Water in, honey, water in the back, water in the back. Hold on, water in the back pocket. So I knock it in the bottle. Good job, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, since the like collapse in 2020 at Old Pueblo, uh, I knew that I had to take action to kind of get my mental health on track. And I didn't take it as seriously as I should have in 2020, where fast forward to 2021 is when I realized like, okay, there's a big issue here. And that was in February and March of 2021, where I had an episode that started on the bike, just on a training ride, a long training ride. And that lasted uh, just over four weeks, even off of the bike. And I was in a really dark place there uh, in February and March of 2021. When it's at its worst, what is it like? Um, I don't like seeing it. He's really quiet. I see his eyes, like, if I can see someone's eyes thinking, I see his eyes thinking a lot. They're scanning the room, they're absorbing everything. He almost seems like overwhelmed always, but doesn't talk, looks drained, doesn't eat, doesn't wanna really participate in any type of outing. He withdraws in pretty much every way, physically, emotionally. You kind of like pretend it's not happening almost. That's when I really spoke up to Mary about like a lot of suicidal thoughts going on. So our approach was to go see a professional right away. Um, in doing so, I started um, ketamine therapy with a, with a specialist that in my opinion kind of saved my life. That turned my depression around pretty quickly. Uh, it's something I'm still working through and then also getting professional counseling. 
pairing those two together was really beneficial for me in 2021. It was kind of like the first step I had taken in my life since eight years old of like taking real action. Can you talk a little bit about what it feels like to lose, I guess, lose hope? Yeah. Uh, at the time I was um, working from home and Mary would go to work. And so I was alone from when she would leave to work until she would come home. And I would get anxiety when she would leave for work until she would come home. When I was in this, my anxiety, my anxiety would s spike. And the same thing would happen at night. When she would fall asleep, my anxiety would spike because I felt alone. And I remember calling her a couple times at work and just telling her like, I, I can't deal with this anymore. And the only way to not deal with this out of desperation was just not not be here anymore. And I remember telling her like, I wasn't willing to see old age if these things were gonna be a constant in my life. Like that's how terrified I, w I was of these episodes. And so it was, it was these things that my brain was thinking up to just basically get relief from it. And like they scared the hell out of me for sure. And I was, I was super nervous to tell Mary. I was nervous to tell my family. I not many people know about what was actually going on in my head, but like telling Mary the descriptions of what I was seeing in my head was a difficult thing, but I knew I had to speak up, right? Otherwise, I was just gonna internalize those things and they were, they, who knows, they may become a reality if I didn't speak up to her. Uh, no, he just charged my headphones on my phone. I already did. Here. Uh, you got it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Kill it. More chain link. So they said Keegan told them that it looked like he was just like pulling off the trail to go pee. And then he looked back and he just fell over. It was like almost like he was pulling off to go pee and maybe he hit like a rock and fell over, but it was not like a fast speed anything. So you don't remember hitting anything going down at all? What time is it? 727. Go ahead, that control. Uh, we also have our uh, side by side What's your there. status? Like, you what's, are you looking at me clearly? Can you see me arrive? okay? Uh -huh. Can you understand what happened? Yeah. So what, what do you think is going on? Do you what, think you, like, passed you out on the bike? Or do you think that you hit something and crashed? Uh, I don't remember hitting anything. I mean, the best thing I could do is ask Keegan, I suppose, if you were with him. You remember being with him? I remember talking to him. It was right here that this just happened? Uh, I don't, it was, or how did it was you back get here? a ways. Did uh, you get somebody, back on the bike? The medics on the bike? Somebody walked me over Coming here. down the Polaris side What did you say what side. time it was? Huh? They're coming down the Polaris side by side. Oh. I'm, I'm really confused. I'm confused with that this just happened. I just don't really understand the sequence of events, but I don't know that you can think it too much because it might just be something that happened so fast that you didn't recognize it. Yeah, so 2022 Old Pueblo, uh, I was ready. I've been, I was probably the most ready I've been for a 24, mentally, more importantly mentally than even physically. And unfortunately it didn't go the way that I had, I had planned. Up until the point the race ended prematurely for me, that was the most fun I'd ever had in a 24-hour race. But the one thing I'm really proud about for myself is that was the most deflated I've ever been after a race, physically and mentally, just because how it ended prematurely. I haven't let it eat me up, and I haven't let it drag me into this negative headspace.
Hey Taylor, just got out of surgery. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? I'm sleepy. <laughs> yeah? Do you yeah. know what the doctor said? About how your surgery went? Uh, I think it went well. Do you know what they did? Just took the old plate out, replaced it, and fixed the new break, and should be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a thumbs up? My scapula still hurts pretty bad. <laughs> That's my biggest fear every day, is falling into those episodes again, and going back to those thoughts, and those places of having suicidal thoughts. And instead of dwelling on things, instead of choosing a negative mindset, it's kind of working away from that. It's it's not easy. It's never easy for me. And who knows, like I could fall into an episode next week. I don't know. But I know that I'm more prepared to handle those than I was in the past. Would, I guess just straight up like, would you say for you, life is worth living these days? Yeah. Yeah, def definitely. And it's worth living with Mary every day. It's worth living with our two dogs. I have amazing friends and family. Um, I'm able to get out on my bike in Arkansas and be by myself and see different terrain. Like it's the simple things. I think going through all these episodes, while it's really difficult in the moment, when I come out of them, I definitely have appreciation for things that I otherwise wouldn't have. And they're usually simple things, right? It's like watching a movie with Mary. I appreciate that a lot more. And it may sound corny to some people, but that's just, it's just me.